Hello everyone and welcome to my video talking all about my plans for Briarfest 2022 and how you can meet me there. This will be my sixth year to in-person Briarfest and my second year driving to Briarfest instead of flying. That's right, I am once again driving from Southern California all the way to Kentucky. Me and my family did it in 2019 and I even have this video about it which you can check out in the video cards or the video description down below if you're interested in checking that out. It will take about three days with me and my dad switching off driving during the day to get there. To some people that sounds ludicrous, but I love long road trips. This is my first year of in-person Briarfest that I will have my lovely mirrorless Sony camera to take super high quality video and pictures along the way. For hotel, I will once again be staying at the incredible Clarion Hotel, the host hotel of Briarfest. I absolutely love the Clarion. This will be my fifth year staying there. I know many people don't like to stay there for various reasons, and that's valid. I can see why some people do not like to stay in the middle of the chaos that is room shopping, especially if they aren't selling themselves. But personally, I've had nothing but good experiences with the Clarion, and I'm always excited about getting to stay there again. Speaking of the Clarion and room shopping, I'll tell you my plans for selling at Briarfest. I do plan to sell at Briarfest, and the only place I will be selling is my Clarion room, which will be room number 431. In the past, I used to also sell at the Briar Swap Meet, but this year I will not be selling at the Briar Swap Meet, and I will only be selling out of my room. My room will be open for sale for sure sometime on Thursday, and then Friday and Saturday evening. It may also be open for sale on Wednesday evening and Sunday evening. Wednesday evening will just depend on if I have the energy to have it all set up and ready to sell that night or not. Sunday afternoon evening will depend on how much I have left over for sale and if I end up having something else going on, like getting together with friends. I mean, more than likely I'll probably have at least a few things left over, so I may have my room open for sale at some point, especially if I'm just kind of packing things up and chilling out for the night. Sunday night at the Clarion is pretty chill in general. There are a lot less rooms open and a lot less people shopping. But as I said, my room will definitely be open on Friday and Saturday night, and it will be open on Thursday as well, just when exactly, I'm not sure. I'd like to maybe open it sometime in the afternoon, close it for a while to check out the Artisan's Gallery and Swap Meet, and then maybe open it up again later in the evening. As much as I'd like to post specific times of when my room will be open each night, Unfortunately, when I've done that in the past, it was just nearly impossible for me to keep up with those times. So, yes, yeah, sadly, I can't say for sure what times my room will be open. I will try to have it open as long as I can each day, but I also have to factor in taking time for myself to do things like eat dinner, socialize with friends, and do room shopping myself. Briarfest is technically supposed to be a vacation for me, even though it's become more and more of a work trip every year instead. For payment, I accept cash, PayPal, and possibly cards. I have to test out my card reader to make sure it still works properly, but in theory I should be able to accept all three of those payment types. Cash, however, is the easiest and quickest. I may accept trades, but it's not very likely. I might be accepting trades on special run variations, like if there's a glossy matte split variation on a model or possibly surprise model variations, kind of depending on what it is and what I end up with, I might be looking for trades on those too. I am kind of open to trades in general, but the problem is that there's just very little that I'm looking for right now. So if you do offer a trade, don't be offended if I decline it, because there really is only a small handful of models that I'd be willing to trade or partial trade for right now. Now, more about selling, specifically what I am selling. Unfortunately, because I'm coming all the way from California and the car I'll be renting will be on the smaller side, I might not be able to bring as much to sell as I would like. I should hopefully still be able to bring a pretty good selection of models, but since I'll be using an unknown make and model of a rental car, I don't know exactly how much space I'll have and just how many models I'll be able to bring. I will still bring as many as I can though, and I should still have a range of expensive models to cheaper models. I will mostly be bringing OF traditional briars, a variety of stable mates, and some Peter Stone chips. Fortunately, because stable mate scale models are small, I will be bringing a lot of those, and by a lot, I mean about a hundred briar stable mates and stone chips. I will also have some model horse tack for sale, uh, specifically rope halters and beaded rope halters. 
And I have a little bit of whatever tack inventory I have left over from previous years selling. There likely won't be a whole lot of model horse tack though. I'm going to try and make as many new rope halters as I can before Briarfest, but I might not be able to make that many. I will have model horse and horse themed jewelry for sale. I will also have a few other random things like little Schleich and Safari animals for cheap. I may also bring a small box of random free items, depending on the room situation with the rental car. If I have enough room, I'll bring a free box. This in some ways goes hand in hand with me talking about selling models, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about my plans in regards to buying models. I'm going to try really hard to restrain myself this year and hopefully take home way less models than I bring to sell. I am actively downsizing my collection right now, and over the next few years, I hope to really reduce it to a much more manageable size. Like, I probably should cut the number of models I own right now in half because there are just way too many, and I haven't been able to appreciate them all because of that. However, that being said, I am still planning on bringing a good loot of models home. I will be getting three celebration models, six special run models, and at least one limited edition model. So that's ten models right there already. Aside from the models directly from Briar, there are a small handful of original finished Briars that are at the top of my wish list I'll be looking for. If I can find one or two of those at a reasonable enough price, that would be awesome, and I will be more than happy just coming home with a few of the models I've been really wanting. There are also a handful of the little Briar plush horses I'll be keeping an eye out for since I've been kind of collecting those as of late. Other than that, I'll just be looking for anything really that catches my eye, which might be customs or an elf briar I forgot existed, but it'll probably be mostly medallions, honestly. I'm really into medallions right now. If I don't come home with a handful of new medallions, I'll be surprised. But the nice thing about medallions is that they do generally don't take up very much room, so I don't have to worry as much about having the space to take those home. And besides that, there's really not much else I'm specifically looking for right now, which is good because that hopefully means I'll be bringing less home than usual. It will be a different pace from what I've been used to doing the past several times I've been to Briarfest in person, which has been buying a ton of models. If you want, you can watch my haul videos from past Briarfest to see the sheer amount of splurging I used to do. Which, don't get me wrong, has been a lot of fun in the past to just go crazy with buying models. But this year, I really am going to restrain myself. I will let myself splurge a little bit, but I don't want to go overboard. Alright, so now what about my plans for actually being at the Kentucky Horse Park for Briarfest? Well, I actually don't have a whole lot of plans this year, which is good because last time in 2019, I once again had way too busy of a schedule and I honestly felt close to passing out on Sunday from pure exhaustion. Don't do that! Don't be like past me and not set aside more time to take care of yourself and relax and hydrate and all of those things. So to make sure I don't face the possible risk of passing out from exhaustion this year, I am being proactive by planning on leaving my schedule open as much as possible. I'm also factoring in the reality that I've been going through so much this past year that I honestly might just not have the mental and physical energy to push myself as hard as I have in the past. I really need to just give myself a break this year. I have to pace myself and relax when I feel like I need to. Currently, as I'm making this video, there are only two things I absolutely have to go to at a specific time, which are the Cuckoo Clocks workshop I'm taking on Friday, instructed by Da Vinci Creations. I am very excited about that. And the fact that it's about making cuckoo clocks should be pretty fun and laid back, which is what I was hoping to do for this year. And then the second thing is the social media meetup, also formerly known as the YouTube meet. This year it is being hosted by Briar Trot, Infinity Briars, Da Vinci Creations, and yours truly. Idacus Girl 96, Rough Borrow, and Samantha Customs will also be helping out with the meet. The social media meet will be on Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. It is in a different location this year. It will be at the Little Gazebo at the corner of the Annex Ring, which is located just behind the Covered Arena. I have a few different maps marked out here on screen to show you where that is. It should hopefully not be too hard to find. Based on this Briarfest map, it will be close to some other things that Briar has set up as well, like this help and information booth and this craft and activity tent. So if you can find your way to that area behind the covered arena, you should be able to find it without too much trouble. 
Like in previous years, the social media meet will have a raffle with a variety of different model horse items, all donated by different people. There will be tack, customs, and original finished models. I will also be donating some goodies to it. If you would like to donate to the social media meet raffle, please email briartrot at xxbriartrot at gmail.com and let her know what you will be bringing to donate. If you donate an item, you will get 10 raffle tickets for free. Raffle tickets will be $1 each or 10 for $8. Like in the past, all money raised from selling raffle tickets will be donated to the Thoroughbred Retirement Facility, Old Friends, located in Kentucky. If you are coming to Briarfest and able to make it to the meet, please come by. Everyone is welcome. You're also welcome to bring a model or a t-shirt or a poster or anything like that that you'd like to have signed by your fellow hobbyists and friends. There will also probably be a group picture, so if you can, stick around for that, which will probably be towards the end of the meet. The social media meets are always a lot of fun, and everyone is always really friendly, so come drop by, even if it's just to say hello. For those of you that won't be attending Briarfest in person, keep an eye on social media, because Briar Trot or Infinity Briars will try and livestream it. That may or may not be possible, depending on how good this cell service is at the park, but we'll see what can be done. There is one other time-specific thing I'll probably be doing at Briarfest, which is watch the Saturday and Sunday raffle results unfold. Watching the raffle is pretty entertaining, and of course, it's exciting to see if you won. While I don't plan on buying a lot of raffle tickets, I will at least buy a couple. As of making this video, that really is it for any other specific time-sensitive plans I have. I will at some point, of course, have to pick up my Briarfest models and go into the Briarfest store. I'll of course have to go around and see everything there is to see at Briarfest, like the guest horses and the celebration park. Hopefully I can get some really nice shots with my camera and hopefully run into some friends and talk and hang out with them for a bit. I'm really excited and I really hope I can make this a chiller Briarfest experience compared to what I've had in the past. Lastly for this video is some more information about how you can meet me at Briarfest. First off, I will be wearing a name tag the whole time that says Stormy Strike on it to make it easier to spot me. And while I have already talked about when and where you can meet me, I'll say that again. You'll be able to find me at my Clarion room number 431, which will be open sometime on Thursday and then Friday and Saturday evening. You can meet me at the social media meetup, which will be on Saturday at 3 p.m. at the Annex Ring behind the Covered Arena at the Kentucky Horse Park. You're also more than welcome to say hello if you happen to see me around the Clarion or the Horse Park. Please don't be afraid to say hi. I promise I don't bite and I am more than happy to talk to anyone. One of the main reasons I go to Briarfest is to see all of you. Also, don't think that if I'm filming or talking to someone else that you can't still come up and say hello. Please feel free to try and get my attention. You're also always welcome to ask me to sign anything. I will have Sharpies on hand for signing. I know I keep emphasizing this, but I have to because I've had too many instances of people telling me that they saw me somewhere but were too afraid to come say hello. If it helps, know that I have social anxiety. I've gotten better with it over the years, but I still get social anxiety, and I know very well what that feels like, as well as just having anxiety in general. Remember that we are all at Briarfest because we all love horses and model horses. We all have something in common and can strike up a friendly conversation with anyone. Another side note, also don't be intimidated by my dad either. He will be with me most of the time, and he is super chill and nice too. That sums up my plans for Briarfest 2022. This video and my one giving my thoughts on the Briarfest models will likely be my last videos before Briarfest. So to all of you going to Briarfest, I hope to see you there, and I hope you have a wonderful time. To those of you not going to Briarfest, I hope you are still able to participate online and will have a lot of fun. I will do my best to share my in-person Briarfest experience with everyone after Briarfest in either a long vlog video or a series of vlogs. You can follow me on my social media for Briarfest posts and updates as well. I'm not sure how often I'll be able to post, but I generally post a lot on Instagram, so you can follow me on there to see the latest of my Briarfest adventure happenings. Let me know in the comments down below if you are planning to attend Briarfest in person or online. Thank you all so much for watching, and happy Briarfest!